Welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm Matt from AWS. If you've been watching this series, you'll know that we usually ask customers to talk about their architecture, tell us about interesting ways that they're using AWS to solve their business problems. We're going to do something a little different today. We're going to turn the camera on ourselves. I'm here with Neha Rungta from the Automated Reasoning Group, which is part of our AWS security team. And we're going to talk about how they built an AWS service that is now part of AWS Config. So thanks for joining, Neha. Thank you, Matt. It's great to be here. So tell us about the Automated Reasoning Group. What do you guys do? So our group um, has been developing formal verification techniques for uh, cloud security. Uh, more specifically, we, we look at semantics-based reasoning for different aspects of AWS services, such as IAM policies, EC2 networks, and try to answer questions about security best practices. Um, and we've been using and developing these tools internally for the past two years um, and have had a lot of success with them. That's great. So the Automated Reason Group builds tools that help us internally operate more securely with our own services and things that we do at Amazon and AWS. Yes. But more recently at the AWS New York Summit, you released two AWS managed rules as part of AWS Config, is that right? Right, so the two managed rules for AWS Config, uh, again, provide these two uh, best practice, security best practice uh, practices that we have within AWS to say, are, are your S3 buckets world writable or are your S3 buckets world readable? Mm -hmm. And now we are providing this functionality to all external AWS customers through AWS Config. That's great. So let's pause for a second and talk about how you actually built this one. So it was part of AWS Config, one of their managed rules. So how does it actually work? How do the rules get triggered? How do they get evaluated? So, um, so, so you can turn on different, managed, different types of rules for different types of resources. Within AWS Config, uh, the two we released are related to S3 resources. Mm -hmm. So anytime you make a change to anything within your S3 resource or your S3 resource policy, it, AWS config triggers a change. And in the back end, we have this automated reasoning engine that's that's built on using semantics of IAM to, to check for these two questions. Uh, is your did your S3 did you make a change that made your S3 bucket world writable or world readable? And based on those results, AWS config will give you a result saying is it compliant or non-compliant with respect to those questions. That's great. I mean, a lot of customers, especially as you get more complex infrastructure, more complex security policies. Uh, it can get, it's increasingly difficult to evaluate these policies. So the actual code, the, the reasoning that you guys have written, where does that ha actually happen? I see AWS Lambda, are they running in Lambda functions? Yeah, so the, the, the reasoning engine essentially runs as a Lambda function. So uh, whenever the managed rule is called, it essentially triggers, um, it, it calls the Lambda at the back end and it, it returns uh, the answer back to uh, the config managed rules and then present it to the user in the config console. Great, so I create a resource in S3, I apply a policy or I change that policy, AWS can pick, picks that up, an event fires, it triggers a Lambda function that, that fires off your code. So let's talk a little bit about what your code actually evaluates. So we're gonna walk through two examples, is that right? Yeah, so just kind of look at an example as to why this is a hard problem and why we need to go, why we, why we need to really be understanding semantics of IAM um, to answer these questions. Great, so you have one up here on the board to start with, so tell me about this one. So this is, this is a, a simple looking uh, uh, IAM policy where you have a, a prin any principle that's allowed uh, any S3 action on any resource given a specific condition where it says if your condition AWS source VPC uh, uh, string equals um, a star. If your source VPC is endpoint is n named or titled exactly star, only then a principal can perform any S3 action on any resource. So this, in fact, is not a wildcard. This is actually it's a, a string. It's a very restrictive string, in fact. Uh, I mean, you, you can imagine, why would you even name your endpoint a star? Yeah, I don't even know if you can. So this policy might not even be valid, let alone uh, do what I actually wanted to do. So it, but this is representative of why it's hard uh, when people who are not experts in writing IAM policies. Mm -hmm. um, we, we've seen examples such as these come up where um, People think that they're doing some one thing, but it, the policies do not have their uh, intended consequence. And this is where a semantic-based reasoning engine can help them answer questions about, what is my policy really doing? Great, so now let's switch to a second example. Yes. So in the first example, we actually had a policy that was too restrictive. It didn't let us do what we wanted to do, put objects in S3. So what about the other way, where policies are too open, they're letting people do things that we didn't intend? 
Absolutely. So just to kind of take the previous example we had and now just turn that a little bit where we've changed this condition key. Now we have string equals that you need to have server side encryption AES 256. Yeah. I'll, I'll put you on the spot again. Say, what do you think? Uh, is this policy world writable? Well, yeah, I mean, basing on what I saw in the first example, this is going to enforce encryption, but it doesn't look like it's actually going to enforce any kind of constraints around who can still put objects. Is that right? Absolutely. Okay. So now you can see how some conditions are restricting who can do certain things, but others are not. And given the large number of conditions, this can be very hard for customers. Uh, even internally, security engineers have been looking at it for a while. It can be a challenge. Uh, to understand what exactly your IAM policy is doing. Um, you really have to reason about semantics mm -hmm. and ask these questions uh, using leveraging the semantics. Um, so you can see while even in this example, the encryption, the condition key does not restrict world writability and this can lead to unintended misconfigurations. Yeah, we definitely wouldn't want to have this policy on, on my S3 buckets anyway. So yeah, it's really important to automate it and it's important to have an engine that is sophisticated that can pick up on these kind of things. It makes a lot of sense. So not only do you have these uh, S3 options triggered from AWS Config, but I understand that your group has also integrated uh, your solution into Macy, which is another security service that was launched at the New York Summit. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. So in addition to Config, we, we also provide these questions about uh, whether your S3 buckets are well readable or writable within the Macy service. That's great. I love these ways that we're releasing for customers to automate their security and really improve their security on AWS platform. It's nice to see this work coming out of the AWS Security Group. So thanks a lot for really showing us a little bit about how AWS uh, Security builds its services and explaining how these new configurables work. Thanks a lot for your time today. Thank you for having me. And thanks a lot for watching This Is My Architecture.